Member for North Island, Powell River. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Speaker. You know, we're here today to talk about Motion 203 uh, that addresses fraud activities against seniors, and I thank the member from Richmond Centre for bringing this forward to us today. And I think it is really important that all of us take a moment to recognize that the seniors in this country built this country, and if it wasn't for them, we would not be sitting in the seats that we are sitting in today. We would not be in this country the way that we are today. And I just want to take this opportunity to recognize uh, former mayor of Port McNeil, Jerry Fernie, who passed away in February at the age of 85. When you talk about somebody uh, building this country, I would say that Mayor Fernie was a man who built a large part of the North Island. We should all be grateful for the amazing work that he did. He was the mayor of Port McNeil for 39 years and he served on council for a total of 46 years. Talk about community service. I just want to take this opportunity to send my condolences to his wife, Caramel, and his beautiful children, James and Liza. I can't imagine how much they must long and miss him. So today when we're talking about this important issue of fraud activities against seniors, I think it's important that we recognize that the Canadian Safety Council has told us that fraud costs Canadians more than $10 billion annually. And we know that many seniors are vulnerable to scams and that can be very scary. You know, I listened to the former speaker talk about accessing information about scams and fraud and how often um, they, the government speaks about online ability to get information. And I just want to point out that I know some seniors that are amazing online and, and are, they're building their capacity. And I also know a lot of seniors like my own grandmother who is in her 80s and says, you know, I've learned a lot in my life. I have no interest on ever sitting um, at a computer to do the things that I need to do. And when we look at fraud, the vulnerability for seniors can often be held in the simple fact that accessing information can be a challenge. It can also be uh, being asked to do things in a different way and then being confused when the fraudster is going after them. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit. Uh, you know, I think of one 82-year-old constituent in my riding, Susan, who was defrauded of $3,000. She got a phone call from somebody who said they were uh, from the Canada Revenue Agency that if she didn't pay immediately that the RCMP would be at her door and they would be arresting her. And she was told um, that the only way to pay her debt would be to go out to the store and purchase iTunes cards. And sadly, this wonderful woman didn't know that that wasn't how you pay CRA. And I think this is an important point, is as we see a changing economy across this country, a changing way of doing business, sometimes people are vulnerable because they don't understand the changes that are happening. So after spending $3,000 on these ticket, uh, on these iTunes cards, she went to her home, she phoned the call, phone person that she was supposed to, and she relayed all the numbers. Uh, and then they told her, if you don't get us the other 3000 you owe us by tomorrow, then you will be arrested. So she went to her bank the next day, was obviously in distress, and very gratefully the bank helped guide her through this to understand that this had been a fraud attempt. And so I think, you know, when we look at this information, it's really important that we put into context the vulnerability, that we also recognize sometimes seniors have a challenge getting to technology. And I also want to make sure that we all remember in this House, and this government has not addressed this in a meaningful way, is that there are many communities across this country that do not have Service Canada sitting right there for them to go access service. They may not have accessibility to internet. I know that a lot of people think internet is everywhere, but I can tell you from the riding of North Island Powell River, we have communities that are really challenged to have accessible internet. We still have communities and regions where the only accessibility is through dial-up. And so it is important that we recognize that, and when we look at this issue, we're mindful of that. When I look at where we need to go as a country, though, I have to say, in terms of serving seniors, we really need to remember the importance of having a national senior strategy. Right now, we have a government that's made multiple announcements about planning for this, um, but we really need something that's concrete that seniors can rely on. And right now, too many loopholes are around this country and seniors are falling through them. I think it's important that we understand that in Canada, 
pop, the population of seniors are seeing a growth in poverty. We saw 7.6% in the year 2000, and it has gone up to over 11% as of 2013. And sadly, I feel that that number is growing based on the amount of phone calls I get to my office. We have a lot of seniors that are really challenged to pay and afford their medication. They're getting calls. We're getting calls in regularly with seniors having to make very painful decisions because they simply cannot afford the medication that they need to stay healthy. When you talk about seniors in housing, the vulnerability there is huge. You know, I've talked to too many seniors who were sick, couldn't get their taxes done on time, their GIS has been cancelled, and now they're at risk of being evicted from their homes. You know, 86-year-old women should not be calling any office in this country afraid that they're going to be evicted because they were sick and they got their taxes in late and now they don't have their guaranteed income supplement. So this motion really addresses narrowly one part, and an important part, which is fraud and the vulnerability of seniors in having fraud happen to them. And how low income so many of them are, this can be a big challenge if they're just trying to make ends meet. And even if they're wealthy, this can be totally disabling and provide opportunities for them to be scammed in ways that we cannot imagine. So we need to make sure that that's addressed, but it should be in the context of a national senior strategy. Something that really speaks to the vulnerability of seniors. You know, I think of my riding, North Island Powell River, where we see too many seniors moving from one community to another. So we see people in the more remote communities being forced to move to bigger communities to access services, but their absolute isolation, social isolation, creates very bad health determinants. And then we have people who are getting pushed out of the larger urban settings because of the cost of living. And so they're moving to smaller communities away from the services. I think it's important that when we look at seniors, we make sure that we support them in the best way possible to stay in the communities that they know so that they have that social infrastructure, making sure that their health is accessible. And we also know that the poverty rate for senior women is growing and it has increased to almost 30% of senior women. And when you look at those numbers, these are highly vulnerable people. And even if they're scammed for a small amount of money, it could mean huge impacts on their health and well-being and even the stability of their home because they may not be able to stay in their home. You know, Last year, I had the opportunity, and I have spoke about it in this house, to sit with a senior in her 80s who had a health scare where the family thought that she was not going to make it. She was in the hospital for an extensive amount of time, and because of that, they had to move her out of her rental unit. And once she got better, happily she got better, she was given a notice from the hospital saying, you need to be gone from this hospital within a week, and if you're not, we're going to charge you $1,200 a day. And so this woman with a severe infection was moved to a hotel to live there and try to make ends meet. The vulnerability of our seniors across Canada is growing. And it is so important that we stand up in this place and understand the role that they have played in building this country and making sure that we support them in their most vulnerable times. And right now we're seeing that that is not happening. A small boost in the GIS is not making the life of those seniors change dramatically. I disagree with this government. I hear too many stories and see too much vulnerability. So the Justice Department says that each, each year, 10% of Canadian seniors are victims of crime. They are having so many frauds gone against them, and they should not be having to deal with this. And it's really important that we make sure, and that the government does its job in making sure that services and support are accessible. So let's see that happen. Let's see our seniors being valued, and let's protect them by having a national senior strategy where the country and all the provinces and territories and the communities work together to make sure that these big gaping holes to too many seniors and their families are falling through are closed because that is our duty and that is something that we should be proud of as Canadians and today we are not proud of how we treat our seniors. Thank you.